Welcome back. So we're going to be talking about more uh, Walbury grammar and we're going to look at some of the sentence structures and some very, very common words in Walbury and how they compare to other languages. So stay tuned. In this video, we talked about the Walbury language and uh, the special characteristics that make its phonology unique, the different types of sounds that it possesses that is quite different from those in English and even in the other languages in the Asia Pacific region. And during this uh, video, we will talk about how the uh, sentences are made up, how to construct sentences, how to arrange words together to make a coherent uh, sentence and how that sentence would differ from say English or from the Austronesian languages. So in order to say it is raining uh, in Walbury, and in fact, in a lot of Australian languages, what we do is we say um, water is falling. So in Walbury, this is ngapaga wondimi. Ngapaga wondimi. So ngapa, the first word, means water. The ga is the present tense marker. It gives a lot of information. It tells not only is it present tense, it shows that there is one entity. So in this water or the rain, Napa means rain, it means water. It also means a stream and water source. So with a lot of words, but it means that it's only one entity. And one to me is to fall, and it's used to show that the, the, the action is non-past. It is happening right now or it will happen. So the combination of the ga with the one to me means is falling. So rain is literally, it is raining, is literally water is falling. And because the word order is free, you can also say wandami kangappa, which means falling is water, uh, literally means that. But it actually, uh, in Walbury, because the, 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 the sentence structure, the word order is so flexible, you can really rearrange any word in any ways you like and it will still make sense, uh, except that the word ka usually stays in the second position. So the second word is always ka, usually, all right? Um, so this is an example of an intransitive sentence. So an intransitive sentence means that there are usually two parts. There is the subject, which is the, in this case, the water, and there's the action, which is the verb uh, falling. Um, we're going to get transitive sentences, so there are three parts, and this will be a little bit unusual. If you're used to European languages, if you're used to languages like uh, Hawaiian or you know uh, Asian languages like Chinese, uh, this part is going to be a little bit tricky for you. Okay, so how would you say the man drinks water or the man is drinking water? So, so in this sentence, because it's transitive, there are three parts. There is the man, there is the man here is one. There's the drink, to drink, the action, and water, the object, subject, verb, object. Okay, so in, in Walbury, because Walbury is an ergative language, stressing, Walbury is an ergative language, in an intransitive sentence, intransitive, it looks very much the same as in English or German or other European languages, but when it's transitive, when there's a three-part, I call it a three-part sentence, the man, the drinking, and the water, three parts, it actually resembles the passive in European languages. So the first thing is first, change the sentence to a passive. You have to say, water is drunk by the man, and that's how you say it, and then you translate it word for word. Okay, translate this word for word. So water is ngappa. We learned this in the first, uh, you know, the, the, the first, the first slide. And then uh, to be drunk or is drunk. Okay, and then by the man. So ngappa, narni. So narni has, has uh, and if you look in the dictionary, narni means dr eat or drink. Okay, that's how the dictionaries will, will, will list it out. And you type in any, if you find a Walbury dictionary or grammar, narni is eat or drink. But in actual fact, because it's an ergative language, it translates more like uh, the passive in English, to be drunk, to be eaten, okay? And then the word man is watte, so by the man, watingi. So ngapangani watingi. And then so the watte, the ngi means by. It, it's kind of like the best way, it, it has a few meanings, but the most common one is the, as the ergative suffix. It means man by, the action is done by the man. So if I say like um, uh, Peter saw uh, Jane, it would be Jane was seen by Peter. The by here is the, in this case, would be the ngi. All right. But this sentence is not complete yet. Remember what we talked about the, in, in, in the, the, the last couple of minutes ago. We always have to have the particle in the second position, the ka. So don't forget, finally, at the tense position, the tense auxiliary in the second position, like this. So ngapagangarni wadengi. So literally means water, present tense is drunk 
by the man. So in a transitive sentence, the word ga actually shows you that there is one actor doing something to one uh, one object. Okay. So in this case, the water is drunk by the man. One. If you have two people doing something to many things, or, or many things doing something to, then you have to change the 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 auxiliary. You have to this 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 particle. You have to add something else, other suffixes as well to show. So it it gives a lot of information and. Remember that because the, the grammar is so flexible, as long as the word ga remains in the second position, the second word, you can rearrange the sentence in any way you like. So, watingi ga ngapangarni. You can say that as well. By the man, uh, present tense, water is drunk. You can say something like this. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, watingi ga ngarni ngapa. By the man, present tense, is drunk the water. You can say the water present tense by the man is drunk you can say the water present tense by the, uh, sorry uh, is drunk present tense by the man water you can say like this is drunk present tense the water by the man you can say that in any way you like can rearrange and scramble any sentence in any way you like as long as the word car remains in the second position and the, the reason this happens is because usually the first word is usually the most emphasized word if i ask you what is the man drinking you say water then you have to put ngapa in front if i say who is drinking the water if i ask you the question you reply what in what are you ngapa ngari? the man is drinking uh, the water if you ask him um, what is the man doing with the water? Well, he's drinking it, and then it'll be ngarika wadingi ngapa or ngarika ngapa wadingi. So usually the first word is the one that has the most emphasis, and is usually the new information that you want to talk about that comes in front. Okay, let's let's move on and see some other interesting examples. So let's 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 do another example. The man is running in this case. So how would you say it? Again, the same thing. This is at at intransitive sales. There are two parts: man and running. So it'll be man ka running. Like this, what they got pangami. So this is man, the present tense marker, which is ga, and pangami, which is to run, non pass. Usually, when a word ends in an e, like me or something like that, it's usually um, non pass tense. Okay, in well, pretty. And of course, you can also say pangami gawati, the man is running. What is the man doing? He's running. So pangami gawati. Who is running or what is running? Oh, the man is running. So the, 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 the sentence structure depends entirely on the pragmatics, which is the most important element in the sentence. Okay. And then the same thing. Let's let's do this. The, the dog bites the man. Okay. How do you do it again? Remember, ergative language, change into the passive. So the man is bitten by the dog. Man is what they, to be bitten is yalgirni. Yalgirni. And by the dog maligari. Now, uh, one one thing to remember is that the um, the ending. A lot of the suffixes change in world really depending on the sound of the previous uh, vowel. We'll take a look at it, and also by the length. Longer words will take certain suffixes. Shorter words will take other suffixes. Uh, because the word man wati is two syllables, it's watingi. But because maligari, which is the word for dog, has three syllables, it takes a late. We'll look at these rules later on in other videos. But this is one of the most interesting aspects of the language. The the, the suffixes rather like if you speak, if you have knowledge of Turkish. Finnish, Hungarian, uh, any of the Central Asian languages, Estonian is another one. You you know that the the, the thing called vowel harmony. Well, Walbury has vowel harmony as well. We'll look at it, and they also have a, a type of harmony where the suffixes will change depending on the how long the or short the word is. Okay, so the word is ga. So what the ga, yalgeni malgeli. Okay, so the, the man is bitten by the dog, literally. And again, again, because of how flexible the language is, you can rearrange this in any way you like. Maligaliga, uh, what the yargani? You can say maligaliga yargani, what the? You can say what the maligali yargani? You can say yarganiga maligali what the? And then you can say also yarganiga what the maligali? And and they would mean the exact same thing. And the only difference is the emphasis. Which one do you want to talk more about? Which element is more important? Is it the man? Is it being bitten? Or is it the dog? Which is the most important element in the sentence? Okay. Um, so if you're confused by this, take this slowly. We'll, we'll look at more examples uh, in later videos. But just to give an example of how the language works, it's a beautiful language, and Walbury I think would be amazing in song or poetry because the the grammar is so flexible. Uh, it's it's much more flexible than in European languages, and and as we'll take a look in later videos. All right.
So thank you very much. Uh, this is I'm going to keep it short and simple for now. We'll go into more detail in later videos as to about the structure of Aubrey. Um, probably in the next videos we'll talk about the auxiliary in the second position, how how we make uh, present tense uh, sentences, and how we show I, you, he, she, and we, and all how it works because it's actually quite complicated. Uh, the, the 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 structure of the language when we talk about the 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 outside elements, the 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 like the man does something to the dog, whatever, that's, that's different. And pronouns work in a very, very different way from the uh, surrounding noun phrases. So we're, we're going to take a look at that for now, okay? So thank you very much for now, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye.